All right, so we're going to talk about parent functions today. And my idea here is I want you to understand the various characteristics of different type of parent functions. So to understand what is what we're going to be studying here, and this is supposed to be like a lesson to get us to where we want to go with the rest of this, because we're going to be studying lots of functions throughout the year. Um, a parent function is a set of basic functions in which more complicated functions are made from. The four basic ones, and there's actually way more than this. I mean, there's a poster in my room that says this. But the four basic ones we're going to worry about are linear, quadratic, inverse, and exponential. And we're actually going to have um, we're actually going to do something with this uh, on the day, the next day, to uh, to make sure y'all understand these characteristics. But here we go with this. So the first one we want to look at is linear, which is a straight line. The linear function looks something like that straight line that goes through the origin. If you notice, it's going up 1 over 1, which means it has what is called a constant rate of change. And the domain, because of the arrows, is all real numbers, or that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Furthest to the left is negative infinity, furthest to the right is positive infinity. The range is also all real numbers. That's the symbol for all real numbers, which means it can be any number. Um, and its thing is also, or it could be negative infinity, positive infinity. I personally like the boundaries that these represent, but I mean, most of the time you're going to see it like this. Okay, the const there is a constant rate of change, which means that it goes up and over the same amount. And the linear function really is the only one that does that. And we'll talk more about what a rate of change means over the course of the next few weeks. The function for this is y equals x or f of x equals x. So that's this linear parent function. And this is what it would look like. And these are the characteristics of the parent function. So you've got an idea of what the graph looks like, what the function looks like, and some of its characteristics. Now let's look at the quadratic. The linear and quadratic are going to be our biggest two throughout this um, class. That one is y equals x squared, or it could be f of x equals x squared. So kind of keep that in mind. The graph it looks like that. It's a u-shaped graph. That's called a parabola. The u-shape is called a parabola. Um, the domain, x is still all real numbers because x can be any number. But the range gets a little bit different because the range you notice it's starting here at 0, and it's going up. That is saying that y is greater than or equal to 0. Um, that would be the range. Or that zero, y is between 0 and infinity. The thing about quadratics is they are symmetrical, which means like they have equal halves. And if you notice, it is decreasing when x is less than 0, and it's increasing when x is greater than 0. So kind of keep that in mind. This is one of those functions where it can increase and decrease. The next one is called an inverse function. Uh, that's something we will see. Uh, we don't probably do too much with the um, graph on that, but we shall see it. That one's 1 over x. Uh, and then you can see there it is a curved line. But it also gets close to 0 and doesn't quite get to 0. And those lines that it's getting close to are called asymptotes. The domain is any number but 0. The range is any number but 0. So to show the domain and range, we just say x is not equal to 0, y is not equal to 0, which means we're saying that it can be any number other than 0. Because if you notice, they're getting close to 0 without actually getting to 0. Notice it is decreasing, both of them, even if it does kind of do a flip-flop thing. So you got to be careful there. And notice how I did not have them equal to 0. The next one we have is exponential function. The exponential function is probably something we're going to study closer towards the end, maybe just a little bit. Um, but it is something that is important. Its general notation is f of x is equal to a to the x power. Notice that x is now in the exponent. We're going to use 2 to the x. And you can see the graph. 
The domain there is, again, all real numbers, because x can be any number, but the range is y is greater than 0. Not equal to, greater, because it gets close to 0, but it never actually gets there. And this is increasing, um, really, the whole time. Because as you go from left to right, it's going up, even if it doesn't look like it's quite going up. Finally, I'm going to add this one in, called the absolute value function. The absolute value function looks like f of x equals the absolute value of x, which is a symbol like that with the two bars, and it makes a V-shaped graph because basically what it does is it takes any number and makes it positive. So x can be any real number, but y has to be positive numbers, greater than or equal to 0. Um, it is, you can again see it's decreasing when y, it is decreasing when y, or I'm sorry, x is less than 0, it is increasing, so just like the parabola, increasing when x is greater than 0, and it also is symmetrical. The key there is that this doesn't curve at the end. This is very much a straight line. It's almost like they took a took the, the bottom half of a um, or the left half of a linear function and reflected it up. Okay, let's see if y'all remember that from geometry. Anyways, these are the different types of parent functions we'll probably look at throughout the year. We might add some more, but I want y'all to be introduced to that. Now remember, all these, everything we start studying will be kind of a transformation or a change from one of these parent functions. And we're going to start off with linear functions. Um, so may, hopefully you'll have these notes when I see y'all next time. And thank you very much.